Car and go, Kai. <laughs> I'm reading from right to left. <laughs> Gar, Epi, Eper, that is, Asen, Legomenoi, Theoi, Ate, An, Urano, Ate, Epi, Gaze, Hosper, Asen, Theoi, Poloi, Kai, Kurioi, Poloi. He brought the Koran with me tonight. See that? <laughs> For indeed. And now we have an unusual first class conditional particle there. Page 118, by the way, that A pair. Comes from A and Perry. A uh, little enclitic particle. And here it means uh, indeed or sense. There are being called gods, either in the heaven or upon the earth. Look at there. Either in the heaven or upon the earth. Even as host pair, there are gods many and lords many. Now, so-called gods. There are many so-called gods uh, in the heaven and on the earth, and it means a lot of things. It means two different things. One is way up there in outer space, in the heavens, in the spirit world, okay? That's where God is. And also, people worship things that crawled on the ground, didn't they? Crawled upon the ground, they worship things. And they worship birds that flew in the sky, also, didn't they? All kinds of things. They worshiped all these kinds of things. For indeed, there are being called gods, either in the heaven or upon the earth, even as or just as there are gods, and these are little gods now. These aren't real gods. These are. This is what you call demonic, little demons. Okay. And lords, kirioi. What's the word lord there mean? Lord. What is the Hebrew for that word lord? Adonai. All right. These are king of kings and lords of lords. There are many. Uh, uh, in the physical world, there are kings, aren't there? There are kings. And princes, and queens, and all of that. And uh, in the physical world, they're the same thing. And in the spirit world, there are... What are the highest angel forms that we know of? Archangels. Archangels. We are archangels. What we call archangels are what, we, what is head angels. Head angels. Archangels comes from what language? The name Archangel. Doesn't come from Hebrew. Greek? Yep. Arch, head angels. Archangels is from Greek. Okay. Those are Greek. So there are many, many... Uh, a demon is a little god, isn't it? A demon is a little god. It's what we call a lesser god. It is a supernatural being. It's not natural. It's not subject to death, is it? Or spirit subject to death? No. No, they're not subject to death. All right, let's go on a little further. 8 and verse 6. All, himen, ace, theos, ho, pater, ek, hu, ta, panta, kai, Hemes, ace, auton, kai, haste. See, that's a rough breather too now. Haste. See that? Kyrios, Asus, Christos, D, who. Now that's not U, but who. Okay? Just like W H O, who. Ta, Panta, Kai, Hemes, D, Auto. D there is a contraction from D A. Okay? What's a little preposition by the agency of page 90. Allah is a strong adversive conjunction, which is a uh, an abrupt brick wall, but okay, real strong. But to us, but to us, one God. Okay, but to us, one God. Whole pater. We got a word. Uh, 
padre out of the Greek, you know, which is what? Uh, padre means his father, okay? And uh, pater familia, uh, father of the family out of Latin. One God, the Father, out of whom the all things and we in him, look at the word in him, ace in him, ace, alton. Now, alton there, if you look at the last part of that, it's omicron, nu, or on, and that is accusative singular masculine. Every word is a third person pronoun, by the way, it's accusative singular masculine. In him and one Lord Jesus Christ, one Lord. Look at that word Lord there. One Lord. In Greek, in the, in the Septuagint, that would be Jehovah. So right underneath that thing, write Jehovah. Jehovah. All right? That's a t Jehovah title. One, and Jehovah is going to become the Messiah, isn't he? According to Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53, he's going to be the suffering Messiah. Right. Asus is what? What does that name mean? Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves. And then, and then Christos. That's the word Messiah right there. That's where the word Messiah, the anointed one. The Messiah. Through whom, that's genitive singular masculine, through whom, belonging to whom, or the oblative, if you want to put it in oblative, that's a case of origin, isn't it? Or out of whom, by whom and out of whom, all things, and we, by the agency of him. All right? We, by the agency of Colossians 1, 15 through 20. One, well, one, well, Colossians 1, 15 through 20, cross-reference to this here. Colossians 1, 15 through 20. Uh... Rebecca, you got that open there? And do you, can you find Colossians real, really fast for me? Colossians 1, 15 through 20, come up here and read that. And Gabby, I'm going to have you read uh, 5 and 6 and something in a minute, okay? Well, you don't have your Amplified Bible today? <laughs> All right, okay. Well, I lost Penny today, and, and I don't, you don't have one either. <laughs> Philosophy is 1, 15 through 20. <clears throat> All right. Now he is in the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. For it was in him that all things were created, in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities. All things were created and exist through him, by his service, intervention, and in and for him. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist, cohere, are held together. He also is the head of his body, the church, seeing he in the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place stand first and be preeminent for it is pleased the father that all the divine fullness the sum total of the divine perfections powers and attributes should dwell in him permanently and god purposed that through by the service and the intervention of him the son all things should be completely reconciled back to himself whether on earth or in heaven as through him the father made peace by means of the blood of his cross all right. Now, you, can you go back over there to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 and 6 for me? 8, 5, and 6. For although there may be so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many of them, both gods and of lords and masters, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things and for whom we have life, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through and by whom all are, are all things, and through and by whom we ourselves exist. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that catches up where we are. Now, 
we hear all kinds of stuff what the Quran believes and what the Muslims believe and all that kind of stuff, okay? I've read the Quran a couple of times. I even read the Edith's Guide to the Quran, okay? And uh, the Quran or the Muslim world today will not accept any of the writings of the Gospel of, of John as inspired. They believe the Bible, all right? That's what they call the, book, the people of the book. But they do not believe the Gospel of John. They don't believe any place in the New Testament where it says that Jesus is God. They don't believe that. I'm going to read, uh, and on page... Uh, Four hundred and twenty-eight in this version of the Quran. Okay, <clears throat> talks about the prophets and the apostles of the Bible and of the world. Okay, <clears throat> and here Muhammad is addressing the the Christians, so-called. Now, there were some uh, Christians that lived in his time that weren't quite so uh, dangerous to his religion. And that's what we call Baptists back in that period of time. But then they had some in his period of time that were very dangerous. And what were they called? That was a Roman, the Holy Roman Empire or Catholicism. All right. He talks and addresses these and he addresses the Jews also. O ye people of the book, overstep not your bounds in your religion. And of God speak only truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only an apostle of God. Okay, now this is right straight from what they are saying here now. And his word he conceived into Mary and a spirit proceeding from himself. Believe therefore in God and his apostles and say not three, there is a trinity. For bear it will be better for you. God is only one. Now the Catholic Church believes in four gods, don't they? Basically, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and Mary, the mother of God. All right, Christians believe in one God. We believe in one God. There's only one God. We know of him as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But he's only one God. The only God you're ever going to see is what? Jesus Christ, which is the physical image of God. That's it. The Father, you have to worship him in what? Spirit. Through whom? Through Jesus Christ. All right, the Holy Spirit, we're going to see the Holy Spirit? We have the Holy Spirit living in us, don't we? The Holy Spirit is living in us. The Holy Spirit, as a comforter, is guiding the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? But we're only going to see one God. We only believe in one God. That is triune in nature like you are triune in nature. All of those Muslims, they're triune, whether they like it or not. <laughs> there are three in one in every person. You are body, you are soul, and you are spirit. Period. That's try you. Now, without that, without body, soul, and spirit, are you an entity? Not really. When you die, your body is separated from your spirit and soul, isn't it? And it's not going to be complete again until you're resurrected, is it? When you're resurrected, then you will be body, soul, and spirit, either to be with God or in file 13, period. All right. Now, when we see each other, we see our physical expression, don't we? We don't see the spirit, and we don't see the soul. In Luke, the 16th chapter, our spirits, our souls is where all of our memory is, isn't it? We know that. When we leave this life now, temporarily, if you die, physically you show up in heaven or in Hades. In your spirit form. Okay? All right? In, in a, what we call, you, you, you thirst, you hunger, you remember, all of this stuff. You have all of these senses, but not complete. But when you are resurrected, when you stand again, Anastasia, then you're put together in a, uh, if you're lost, you're going to be in a, uh, in a sick body. Osthenia. An imperfect body. 
but it will last forever. It will be asbestos in Greek. It's asbestos. What, do we have a word in, os, in English, asbestos? What is that? Asbe- can you burn asbestos? No, it doesn't burn. You can just put flames on it all you want. Our bodies that are lost bodies will be in hell in an asbestos form. It won't burn up, but they will feel all of the disease they died with and everything else will be there with them forever. That's a bad thing, isn't it? We don't want to go that way, do we? All right. Anyway, it says here that God is one. God is one. We believe in the in the Father, we believe in the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and there are not three gods. The Lord, one. Ace. One Lord, one Lord, one God, in other words. One Jehovah. One Jehovah. Eight and verse seven now. Eight and verse seven. All, uk, en, posin, he, gnosis, tinas, de, te, sin, athe, sin, athea, that is. Hios, arte, tu, idolo, hos, idolo, theton, es, theosin, kai, hey, sin, a dasis, sin, a dasis. But we have that strong adversity of conjunction there. If you want to write down 15, it's on page 15 in that analytical Greek lexicon. Not abrogation in all, but not in all the knowledge. Gnosis. Gnosis, the knowledge. There are several words for to know or mind in Greek, aren't they? And this is one of them. This is one where we got, we got a term called Gnostics, don't we? Gnostic, that was what? The know-it-alls. That's the cross between a skunk and a computer. And the skunk and a computer, the cross is what? A stinking know-it-all. All right. <laughs> All right. The, the know-it-alls, the Gnostics, and then the agnostics are those that don't know anything. That's what we get our word ignorant from, agnostic. All right, ignorant. But not in all the knowledge to some, but the... Force of habit. That word there uh, is as accustomed to. It's an established custom or habit. It comes from seen and atheis. Atheis. Seen and atheis. Seen and atheis. That's where it comes from, right there. That's the root of it. Seen atheis. It means intimacy. Intimacy. Intimacy, the proof of habit, the force of habit, uh, consuetudo in Latin, ethic, ethic. We got a word ethic just about right out of this. Ethic, what does that mean? All right, ethic, that means ethics, habits. What are your habits? What are your ethics? All right. Eos, until, the little conjunction of time, page 180, that word heals there. Arte, now, near, close, at hand, of the idol, idolu. We get our word idol right out of there. Idol means what? What does that mean? What is an idol? Back there in, in, uh, when uh, Rachel took her father's idols, what were those little, uh, the little teraphim? What were those little things? What were they? Remember what they were? Some of you that were in the Hebrew class. Cows. What? Cows or animals, weren't they? Uh, no. Anybody remember what they were? What? They were little statues of maybe Noah, Adam. They were statues of their ancestors. And they worshipped their ancestors. And just like a Buddhist or whatever, they asked their ancestors to help them. They asked their ancestors to help them, and Rachel thought if she stole these family idols that her husband Jacob would be the head of the family because he'd have all of the forefathers going with him because whoever had the idols had the information, had the power, had the family heirlooms, okay, family heirlooms. 
Idols. Idols are images. All right, images. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. The image of the invisible God. An idol is an image of a God. Okay? Image of the idolatrous sacrifice. Idolothetone. There we have idol and we have sacrifice. It's nominative or accusing singular neuter, either form in this. And they eat. They eat. Estheusen. Estheo. Comes from Estheo. And the conscience. Auton asthenes usen melinete. The next seven D over there, see it? Auton asthenes usa melinete. The conscience, the word conscience there. Sina days. It's a, a Latin is conscientia. Conscientia. The conscience. Acts 23 and verse 31. Uh, uh, Jesus said food cannot pollute a man in, Mar in Mark uh, 7 and 18 and Luke 11 and 40. And Acts 23 and verse 1 said uh, food doesn't pollute you. What pollutes you? What pollutes you? What? what comes That's what comes out of the man. But food, Paul said, sometimes can pollute your brother. Can offend your brother. Food. All right? Of them, ostenes. Ostenes. Ostenes means not strong. Not strong. Not strong. Matthew 26 and verse 44, it means unfirm, it means mentally weak, it means physically and spiritually imperfect or sickly. Uh, some of the brothers are uh, sickly, they are weak, they are like little babies. I remember when Dakota was little, I carried her for the first several hundred miles that she crossed the ground with. <laughs> She was always carrying me. When, when we ate, I always set her on my lap and I fed her. Carried her around all over. Carried her around. It wasn't because she couldn't walk, but she couldn't stay up with me. Her little legs, she just go just like that. I tell you what, she was the skinniest little thing trying to stay up with me. <laughs> Even the other day when we went to uh, Brother Allen's funeral, we were kind of late. And uh, we were going across the campus here, and I was going at a high rate of speed. And she said, Dad, you may be dying and of, can of cancer and all these other things, but she said, I still can't stay up with you. <laughs> Weak. Weak. The reason why we go to discipleship classes is to become strong in the Lord. Become strong. And the word being, ui, usa, usa. That's nominative singular feminine, uh, present, participle, and active from Amy. It is defiled. That word defiled there is a rare word in the New Testament. It's used three times. It comes from mol, molino, molino. Molino. It means to stain, to stain, to pollute, or to contaminate, to contaminate. To contaminate. I was talking before the class just a little bit. The Americas uh, housed 150 million people before Columbus. I just brought that out the other night in the Hebrew class. The people over here, how did the Indian get here? Basically, when God divided the earth, the Indian was here. That's how he got here. If you study archaeology for so many years, the Smithsonian Institute stood against any evidence that there were Indians here, or very many Indians here at all, before Columbus. But now the scientists, and they're chasing the DNA and everything else, they know that there was, a, there was this, the largest populated place in the world was right here in the Americas. This was the most populated place in the world. The people lived long time. What did Ponce de Leon in Florida, what was he looking for in the Everglades? What was he looking for? The fountain of youth. You know why? Because those Indians lived a long time. They had the best medicine in the world. 
and they had the best food in the world. The average Indian uh, diet was 2,500 calories, and the people in Europe were starving to death and dying of disease because they lived in little old, un no hygiene at all. The Hamites practiced hygiene in China and in America. These are all Hamites. The Indians, when they first white men, when they came to the shores here, they looked at them and they said, boy, those people are ugly, they are short, and they stink. <laughs> they stink, and they got hair all over their faces. Why? And their clothes are rags. We throw stuff away like that. <laughs> and uh, they said, we got the greatest culture in the world back in Europe. And the Indians said to them, what are you doing over here if you're so good at home? <laughs> What's the matter? You can't stand each other over there or something? Well, uh, there wasn't even rats in America. There wasn't any tumble tumbleweeds in America. That's called what's Russian thistle. That comes from Russia. Until 1880. All of this stuff, the American Indians burned the plains. They created the Great Plains, and they created the area for the buffalo. And they burned off all the grasslands with all the fleas and the ticks and everything with it. Every year they did it. They burned. They said the Indian carried flints and steel with him all over the place and starting fires. They burned into the place, was burning up all the time, all the time, burning the ground, burning the ground, burning out the underbrush. The trees were healthy. The, the trees were big. It killed up all the termites. It killed all of the grubs and everything. And the, they said the forest here in America looked like English parks. There was no undergrowth at all for thousands of years. They killed all this. And they managed the environment heavily. North to south, they created, they drove great herds of buffalo after they created plains back all the way to New York. They drove with fire, they drove great herds of buffalo all the way back there so they'd have portable food. See, they managed the buffalo and the deer herds like the white man managed their cattle and sheep and goat herds. They used all this like that. But what happened in America, it was not the bullets that killed them. Indians could shoot 15 area, arrows or 20 arrows by the time you loaded one of them old antique guns. And they would penetrate and kill more thoroughly than a bullet would. They had more firepower. They had greater, war they had greater generals. You know why the American people won against England? Overpopulated. No. Why did the American people win against England when we had the revolution over here? Because the American people learned to fight like Indians. <laughs> they stand out there and shoot at each other until everybody falls down in Europe. The Indians didn't shoot a lot. They had better sense than that. I mean, this is dumb way to fight a war. <laughs> what got them? Pollution and disease. Like I said before, between 80 and 98 percent of the Indian people in the Americas died because of disease. This word here means disease. It means defile. It means to pollute. To pollute. First Timothy 3 and 9, Revelation 3 and 4. Even if unenlightened, one must act according to his conscience. A.T. Roberts says it's a sensitive guide to one's spiritual condition. Knowledge breaks down as a guide with a weak and unenlightened conscience. We uh, have a lot of liberties in the Word of God, don't we? If you study church history, you'll find out a lot of things that we practice today really wasn't what Baptists believed 200 years ago. A lot of this is just practice, and it's become dogma. <laughs> and then it's become doctrine sometimes. Uh, Rebecca, can you bring that up here and, and read 7 and, I guess, 6 and 7? 6 and 7. 6 and 7. <coughs> Yet for us there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things and for whom we have life, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
through and by whom are all things and through and by whom by whom we ourselves exist nevertheless not all believers possess this knowledge but some through being all their lives until now accustomed to thinking of idols as real and living still consider the food offered to an idol as that sacrificed to, to an actual god and their weak consciences become defiled and injured if they eat it all right they become polluted they become diseased if they eat it this is according to them so we have to remember those sickly people those spiritually weak people 8 and verse 8 now broma remember the old broma seltzer stuff you know it's supposed to make your stomach feel better broma means to chew it means to chew to chew and uh, meat you have to chew don't you I haven't had any meat for a long time since my jaw came out of place, I can't chew anything. And uh, so I have to eat baby food kind of like, sort of something that's very soft. It doesn't work anymore. I can I have to wear a night guard and all this kind of stuff. I can't chew. Well, babies don't have any teeth to chew, do they? So you have to give them baby food. And this food here is uh, meat that was offered to idols. And it, meat is, uh, is the highest Priced commodity, isn't it? Basically. How much grass does it take to grow a, a 2,000 pound buffalo? A lot. I mean, a whole lot. How much corn and barley and oats does it take to put one fattened steer through the butchery? A lot. A whole lot. Meat is very expensive. Meat was very expensive back in these days. Now, Adam in the garden told uh, his sons, and he had two sons that we got names of, don't we? What were the two sons? What? Cain and Abel. Cain is the one mean, that means gotten, and they thought he was the Messiah. And then Abel means what? What does Abel mean? Avel. Abel means brief, like a vapor. Like when you breathe out in a cold day and you see your breath go out and it disappears, okay? That's, that's vapor, okay? Breathe. Well, God told them that uh, to have a clean conscience and forgiveness of sin, something innocent has to die for them. Well, Abel, he followed the prescribed orders. Cain was supposed to be the heir and the spiritual leader of the family, but he didn't do it. He wanted to offer vegetables instead of high-priced meat. How much vegetables, he was a farmer, how much wheat and barley or whatever he had, how much would he have had to trade it for one lamb? And he was a cheapskate, and he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to offer his fruit of his hands, and so he offered a, a cursed fruit from a cursed ground, a cursed offering from a cursed ground, instead of offering this kind of sacrifice he was supposed to offer, okay? Not the kind of sacrifice he was supposed to offer. He wanted to offer the other kind. And, of course, God didn't accept it, did he? And then he got mad and killed his brother. Chewies, that's what that means, chewies, chewing food that's chewed, meat, but food, food must you must chew, or by the act of chewing, we not, it will command or uh, beside stand is what it means to the God neither if not we may eat are we behind are we worse left behind do we fall short here's the word here to miss the mark that's the word to miss the mark hamartia doesn't mean to miss the mark this one is the word that means to miss the mark we miss the mark all right are we do we miss the mark uh, middle voice for ourselves, nor if we eat. Fago men, fago men, if we may eat. Look at that word, if we may eat. That comes S D O. Do we uh, overflow or excel? Do we uh, have more than enough credit? Uh, 8 and verse 9. Blapete. Day, may, pos, hey, 
Exousia, Himon, Aute, Proskoma, Genete, Tois, Astanasin. All right. Uh, take heed, look. Pay attention, second person plural, present indicative active. But pay attention, not how the authority, and don't look at the word authority there. Exousia. That means liberty, freedom. It means the grant allowance or authority to power. It means privilege or right. All of this here. Privilege, right, authority. I wrote down here uh, from A.T. Robertson, personal liberty does to those who wish uh, to, in to indulge their own whims and appetites regardless of the effect upon others. This principle applies to all social relations in matters of law, health, and morals. The word, the Latin word, uh, noblesse obligé, noble obligation. We have a noble obligation to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Even if we know something is okay, that sometimes we have to bend our knowledge to protect them, don't we? The unenlightened, the, the enlightened, must uh, consider the welfare of the unenlightened or else he does not possess love, A.T. Robertson says. Paul disposes of the pride of knowledge, the enlightened ones, and the pride of prejudice, the unenlightened ones. Each was disposed to look down upon the other in some way. The unenlightened says, well, see, look, he's a terrible sinner because he's eaten meat that he bought in the market, and that meat was offered to those idol gods. And I know that they're idol gods because I used to worship them. See? And the guy that's eating the meat, he says, that's nothing. Those idols mean, are no gods at all. They aren't, they aren't gods. One scorns the other. One of them is looking at the, uh, the enlightened ones, supposedly, those smart ones, you know, that know that they aren't really gods, and it's a horror to them seeing somebody eat an offering that was offered to an idol because they used to be idolaters. All right. Rebecca, you want to come up and bring eight and nine up here again? You're not going to forget next week, are you, young lady? <laughs> we need you up here. Can't wear one person out. <laughs> eight and nine? Yes. Now, food itself will not cause our acceptance by God, nor commend us to him. Eating food offered to idols gives us no advantage, neither do we come short or become any worse if we do not eat it. Only be careful that this power of choice, this permission and liberty to do as you please, which is yours, does not somehow become a hindrance, causing of stumbling to the weak or over-scrupulous, giving them an impulse to sin. All right. Thank you. Now, the food that they chewed. This was expensive food, but you, if you bought it on the market, this food that was so expensive on the regular market, on the black market, where they were selling this stuff in the back, it might cost you $5 a pound for a piece of meat on the regular market, and you could get it for 50 cents a pound over here. Now, being the conservative people that we are, we would go buy the 50 cents a pound meat, wouldn't we? Because the same meat except it was offered to idols. And these weak Christians go over there and they pay the $5 for it instead of the 50 cents, okay? And uh, they think they're saving money, but in doing this, they're hurting the conscience of the weak brothers. Now this word broma here that, that means to chew here, okay? Uh... <coughs> Malls chew your clothes, don't they? Uh, my, my wife's uh, mother was a very uh, wasteful person. Uh, back during the Depression, she was wearing uh, real finest wool suits and silk underwear and all this kind of stuff that nobody else knew they even knew existed. 
And I went out there when we first got married, and I was doing yard sales, and I was getting this vintage clothing that goes all the way back in the 20s and all through there, and these bloomers and stuff. I sold just gobs of them. But I took out suitcases full of clothes, wool clothes, real expensive clothes, like a $100 dress back in those days. And the malls that is eaten through them, and when those malls holes in them, they're not worth anything. Not worth a dime. My uh, oldest boy was in a yard sale here a few years ago, and he and he gave a hundred dollars for a bunch of old guns. They were all antique guns, and one of them he thought was a replica of a 1851 or 61 Colt Navy. It turned out it wasn't a replica; it was real. And all of the guns were real, too, and a lot of them are very, very expensive. And he bought himself a gun safe. And he put all these guns in the gun safe and didn't open the safe up for like 20 years. When he put that pistol, that 1861 Colt Navy, in the gun safe, it was 98% blue and just like it was when it was brand new. It had, it had been in an attic and just stored and all greased up and everything else, it looked like it was brand new in 1861. When he took it out of the gun safe, it was solid rust. Safes, gun safes, rust guns. <laughs> if you don't put something in there to make the guns not rust, to eat up the moisture in them, you're going to lose your guns. Same, simple as that. It'll eat them up. You've got to have something to dry them to keep it dry in there. That, that rust ate the gun up. He brought it out to me, and he said, Dad, it's ruined. I looked at it. I said, well, if you fix my tractor, I'll get this gun going again. <laughs> and I was out there shooting that gun in a, little, in a couple of three, four days. It took a long time to unrust that thing. The word rust means to eat also. It means to eat. Rust and eat. Malls eat. Rust eats. All right. 8 and verse 10. Yon. Gar. Tis, ide, si, ton, ekonta, nosen, an, ida, leo, kata, ke, menon, uki, he, sin, a, desis, altu, asanus, ontos, oikoto, me, te, sete, ace, to, Ta, idol, lo, sita, estiain. Some people were arrogant enough to show up at idol feasts and sit right down and eat with the idolaters. Some of the children of God were. Some of them were so arrogant and so proud that they didn't believe that idols existed that they showed up to the idol feast so they could get a free dinner. Kind of sound like a Baptist, doesn't it? <laughs> they used to say, at about 1900, you could always tell a, a Baptist church from the smoke signals. All the people in the Baptist church, in the Baptist church, they had great teak spittoons in the front of it, and they would sit there, the men would, and spit tobacco into the spittoons. They had that spittoon. And out between uh, preaching and the Sunday school hour, they'd be out there smoking cigarettes, singing the sending up smoke signals. <laughs> all the time and uh, and of course you know the Pentecostal people at that time said oh don't drink don't smoke do, don't do anything else and some of them were having their wine for dinner and their whiskey and drinking their cough medicine and stuff like that well Pentecostal wouldn't do that the Baptists were just down in her even some of them even had stills you know <laughs> they had privileges in truth you know they said for if, and this word here now, the, uh, the mode of the affirmation of the verb is what rules the condition of the particle. We have four classes of conditional in Greek. First, second, third, and fourth class conditionals. First class conditional means what? Condition determined as fulfilled. In other words, a sense or a fact. Yes, truly, or sense. Now, A.T. Robertson said this is a uh, third-class conditional, but I don't, I don't agree with that because we don't have a subjunctive mode in this, in this verse at all, do we? You see any subjunctive modes in there? Nope. 
<laughs> there aren't any subjunctive modes in there. So then what, the, what does that make this conditional? Even though it looks like a third class conditional, what should it be? A first class conditional. For since anyone sees you, the one, have knowledge in the idle place. Idole, idole, oh, in the idle, in the idle temple, in the idle temple, sitting down. Not the conscience of him is weak. Being, how in the world are you going to build him up? He shall be built up, emboldened. Third person singular future indicative passive. In the idle sacrifices to eat. How are you going to build your brother? If you're in here, if you're, if an idle sacrificial dinner is going on over here and they're worshiping idols and they're praying to idols and they're singing to idols and they're doing all this kind of stuff and you go over there and join them so you can have a free meal, how is that building your brother up? That's not working very well, is it? Not working very well. Rebecca, can Gabby borrow your book for just a minute? I'm going to get her to come up here anyway. Can you, would you come up here, uh, Gabby? <coughs> and get you to read this final. Well, I want you to, I'll tell you what I want you to have you do. Read all the way from 6 through 10. All the way from 6, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 through 10. Okay. Okay, you got to go back one. So we get the whole idea all in one setting here at last. Okay. okay. Yet for us, there is only one God, the Father who is the source of all things and for whom we have life and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through and by whom are all things, and through and by whom we ourselves exist. Nevertheless, not all believers possess this knowledge, but some through being all their lives until now accustomed to thinking of idols as real and living, still consider the food offered to an idol as the sacrificed, that sacrifice to an actual God, and their weak consciences become defiled and injured if they eat it. Now food itself will not cause our acceptance by God nor commend us to him. Eating food offered to idols gives us no advantage. Neither do we come short or become any worse if we do not eat it. Only be careful that this power of choice, this permission and liberty to do as you please, which is yours, does not somehow become a hindrance, cause a stumbling to the weak or over scrupulous, giving them an impulse to sin. For suppose someone sees you, a man having knowledge of God with an intelligent view of this subject, and reclining at table in an idol's temple, might he not be encouraged and emboldened to violate his own conscious scruples, if he is weak and uncertain, and eat what to him is for the purpose of idol worship? Now go ahead and do 11, 12, and 13. And so, by your enlightenment, your knowledge of spiritual things, this weak man is ruined, is lost, and perishes. I need to wait. Okay. All right, now. Go ahead. Um, is lost and perishes. The brother for whom Christ the Messiah died. And when you sin against your brethren in this way, wounding and damaging their weak conscience, conscience you sin against Christ. Therefore, if my eating a food is a cause of my brother's falling or of hindering his spiritual advancement, I will not eat such flesh forever, lest I cause my brother to be tripped up and fall and to be offended. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. We'll go in 11 and 12 and 13 next week. We can hit them lightly, and then we'll go on to Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Thank you for your attention tonight. And thank you, girl. Rebecca, thank you for running up here so many times. Appreciate that. Wear your legs out. <laughs> and uh, some of you else can get some of those Amplified Bibles, too, one of these days. We'll, we'll start there. Eight, five through ten. Well, let's have a word of prayer and uh, see who we're going to pick on to do that. Randall, we never have got you up here yet, have we? You don't want to give up here, do you? Huh? Uh, Fernando, you definitely don't want to come up here, do you? <laughs> All right. Uh, Brother Don, 
Would you mind coming up here and dismissing us in prayer, brother? <coughs> Got a strong conscience, see? <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for bringing us together this evening and allowing us to study your word, Lord. We thank you for Brother Jim and and keeping his health good enough to be here to to just show us the all the ins and outs of your word, Lord. And we just ask that you would be with us this week and and help us, Lord, to just some way talk to somebody or or just show that we are Christ-like, Lord, and just allow us to um, maybe bring somebody to the Lord this week. And these things we pray in your precious name, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being here and coming in after working these long, hard days, too. Working shifts and double shifts and everything, too. Thank you, and uh, go out and do something what? Eternal. All right. So, I'm reading to see this.